It's a Thursday, February 24th, and the time for your Bobby this today now news update. A decline in demand for COVID-19 vaccines has forced authorities to close some vaccine sites and lay off almost all 140 of the volunteers involved in the administration part of the process. Emmanuel Joseph spoke with Joint Coordinator of the National Vaccination Program, Major David Clark, on the development. Major Clark told Barbados today that the active volunteers who had been working at those sites have been slashed from 140 to only 30 now. We've got back the number of vaccines, right? Because we're averaging probably 50 per dose a day. And really, it's really, to have all these things open, it's not going to use the manpower, so we've got back. And, and, and more bags have been to the clinic. Okay. So you cut it back by, by roughly how many? Well, I guess I'll make it back. So maybe we've cut back the actual outdoor site. Right. The only one that we have actually operated while the demand for first and second doses of the COVID-19 vaccine is dropping, boost uptake is better overall. Okay. We were in that framework going up to 40, you know. Mm. Is, is that good or bad? Well, it's good because we had 160,000 people vaccinated with first doses and about 150,000 with second doses, so 40,000 boosters, we're slowly getting there. But, you know, you can only give people boosters when they're eligible. Major Clark also addressed the vaccination rate among children, which she said was going slowly, although 55% of them have received the injection. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. Meanwhile, the Pan-American Health Organization is concerned about a low vaccination coverage in many Caribbean countries. And the organization's director, Dr. Caricia Etienne, said the situation must be urgently addressed to stop the spread of COVID-19 and protect the most vulnerable. She issued the warning at PAHO's weekly press conference on the pandemic. So far we've been able to reach 63% of the eligible population with life-saving COVID vaccines, thanks to the tireless efforts of governments, healthcare workers, and communities. But this is a picture with many contrasts. While 91% of people in the Cayman Islands have been fully vaccinated, less than 1% of Haitians have received all their doses. In fact, out of 13 countries and territories in the Americas that have not yet reached the WHO's goal of 40% coverage, 10 are in the Caribbean. Because of this, today the Caribbean remains especially vulnerable to COVID. And there are varying reasons for the low coverage. Even though limited vaccine supply is less of a barrier now, two conditions that are necessary to scale up campaigns to the farthest corners are still missing. In some countries, vaccination centers are located in central areas, which may be far from the people who need them the most. Also, some countries are short-staffed with doctors and nurses experiencing severe burnout. And then there are those who remain unvaccinated by choice. Dr. Etienne also revealed that although new COVID-19 cases dropped by 44% in the region, more than half of the 13 countries and the territories that reported increases in deaths were in the Caribbean. In the Bahamas, the virus continues to hit vulnerable groups. It is estimated that some 10% of healthcare care workers are currently in quarantine due to COVID-related exposures. Grenada reported a 50% increase in ICU admissions, while Jamaica's rose by 23%, and Guadeloupe had a 9% rise as compared to the previous week. These trends show that many places are still in the midst of the Omicron surge. 
So we must stay vigilant and uphold the measures that have been proven to save lives. A success, a story. FATSA Minister of Energy, Small Business and Entrepreneurship, Kerry Simmons, has described the Barbados Trust Fund Limited. He maintained that numerous persons had benefited from its services and dismissed suggestions that the BTFL was dealing with high levels of delinquency. What the Trust Fund history has shown in the last three and a half years of its existence is that quite to the contrary, people have borrowed and people have been working hard to pay back and have in fact been paying back. Um, and not only have been, been paying back, but they come back and borrow again in order to broaden the scope and the nature of their enterprise. General Manager of the Trust Fund, Jerry Amos, admitted that after February 2020, there had been a downturn in the payments of loans, which he attributed to the impact of COVID-19. However, he said over the past couple of months, with the country reopening, payments had been steadily improving. We realized that businesses were really struggling, and we took a program on to actually reschedule those loans to have some the debt forgive um, up to date and bring these people back to a level playing field and reschedule their loans. Persons were indeed happy to have that ease and that burden lifted. It was mentally, I think, that was taking a toll on a number of our clients. Um, to date, we have done just over 4,067 loans uh, to a tune of um, $18.5 million. Um, it would be noticed within the last year that we would have only done 730 loans, but this is a direct result of the COVID environment. Sure. Our strategic plan going forward will be for 2020-2023. We had an outline that we would have done 1,200 loans within this year. However, due to budget constraints, we have revised that, and we will look to spend just over $4 million this year on financing of loans. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mom and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from other region now, authorities in Antigua are investigating a string of break-ins and vandalism at some learning institutions. More from ABS News. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused much disruption to schools over the past few years. But now, education officials say recent school break-ins and vandalism are compounding learning challenges. The Clay Hall Secondary School is one of the institutions that perpetrators have targeted in the string of break-ins. As poor grade principal Ashwood Azil, who tells me it has impacted the school in more ways than one. Over the last three and a half weeks, we've experienced three break-ins. Three break-ins which really have resulted in tremendous loss to the school, both in terms of uh, material resources, in terms of loss, uh, learning time and so forth. He says the vandals have taken computers, projectors and other vital teaching tools. Azil represented principals at a stakeholder meeting this week discussing ways to address the issue. He says Otter's comprehensive school has also come under attack from vandals. Where you had human excrement being left um, you know, in classrooms and so forth, that certainly is, is, is barbaric and, and by any measure um, reeks of, 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 of just pure um, callous disregard for the, for the value of education. He says these incidents further retard learning for students already faced with challenges from the pandemic. That every time a school has to stop for a day, a half a day, to clean, sanitize, uh, restore their, their classrooms to, a, to an operational state, restore their staff rooms and, and administrative areas, to an operational state. Those are, those are hours that we're taking away from, from students' learning. On the international front, 
The World Health Organization and other partners announced the establishment of a global biomanufacturing training hub that will serve all low- and middle-income countries wishing to produce biologicals such as vaccines, insulin, and cancer treatments. The aim of the hub is to provide a facility where manufacturers from low- and middle-income countries can receive training in how to produce certain vaccines and the licenses to do so. We believe the mRNA technology transfer hub holds huge promise, not just for increasing access to vaccines against COVID-19, but also for other diseases including malaria, tuberculosis, and cancer. Producing mRNA vaccines poses some barriers to low- and middle-income countries, including their costs, the fact that they require a cold chain that's difficult and expensive to implement. It also requires a skilled and trained workforce. Currently, biomanufacturing training facilities are located mainly in high-income countries and operate on a fee-based system, putting them out of reach for many lower-income countries. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.